What is going on YouTube? It is your main man, Max Million, back at it, another hit video. If you're new to this channel, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below on other video topics that you would like to see. And of course, follow me on Instagram at King Max Million. With that said, how's everybody doing today? You know, comment down below, how, is there, how are you doing today? And that would make my day feel even better. And lastly, make sure that you check out my business million made llc which you can go check out at millionmade.com for the latest greatest items in stock great quality affordable pricing and worldwide delivery <clears throat> now with that said you see the video topic you know what this is about life as a security officer i've been at this now for Going on an upwards of about eight months, I believe. I started back in March. So this video has been published in September. So yeah, about seven, eight months, if I'm correct. <laughs> and there has been a lot of different events that have happened during that time frame that I have worked and have been a part of. So with that being said, let me just dive into you or dive into the details about life as a security guard. It's not easy. It is not easy. There are people out there that say, oh, I can do it. I can be a part of this. You don't do as much as you're supposed to do. And I, I've heard stories about it beforehand, but really having the job is a hard, hard thing. This is the one job that I know now from being in it for so long <laughs> for so long now that being in it for a little bit where you can have someone say i love you and i hate you during the same day so i'm not saying that we're the police or anything and i'm not even discrediting them but man if there was a tier right below it i think security is that because we have to confiscate, we have to check and patrol, make sure everyone's safe, make sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to do. And overall, just having a good feeling about the environment that you're in. You have to check for terrorists. We have to check for bags. We have to check food that isn't properly packaged right. And for people that just, try to cause a scene. I mean, these are things that you really don't wanna have to deal with, but you have to deal with anyway. And doing this has been, there have been moments where I, I really, really enjoy it. And there are moments where I'm like, just why? Like, why are there people like this in the world that really make you wanna crack and boil? But, with that said, I am going to address briefly on how you, if you're interested, can become a security officer. And I will also address how I became a security officer. So I basically applied my job with security makes it a little bit more fun because the type of security I work is at sporting events. So I'm a big sports fan. I am wearing a sport sporting team jersey somewhat if you want to call it t-shirt that's my team so i don't work security for them in particular but i do work for their rival <laughs> and it is very fun being at the games and doing security for the games because you get to technically be there in the environment of a free game and even though you are your duties are to look out for suspicious people, check to make sure that no one's doing anything inappropriate, 
and also to make sure that you and yourself are equipped with the things you need to help those people in danger. It really helps to be in that scene and to be in that field. But how I got this job is I basically applied on a website, finding sports jobs in the sports industry. And I happened to apply. I saw that it was a security job to work in Philadelphia. And basically I ended up doing the interview Asked me a few questions, you know, about my background. Who am I? What do I do? How do I think I would fit in this job? And what are some of the qualities that I possess that would make me a good candidate? And then from there, I ended up landing the job. And after that, I started working. From that day, let's say it's more certified. Now, not all states, and I'm speaking for those who live in the United States. So if you're watching from a different country, I don't know how that works. But speaking from the United States terms, not all states are required for you to have a SORA license. A SORA license is a card required for you to have in order for you to work. But for the state that I'm from, you do. And in order to become a security officer in my state, then you have to pass a test for this SOAR license. You have the ability to work all events in your state. And it's a great feeling to have once you get it. I felt great knowing when I first got it that once I passed that test, bam, it felt so good getting that SOAR license because I feel official, I feel certified, the group of security officers. <laughs> and so with that said, I ended up getting my SORA and I ended up starting to work different events all across my state. Now, I want to get into the logistics of tiny things, such as what do I normally do? So it's a random day. Let's say I'm assigned a job at the Philadelphia Eagles game. And I basically am working the gates, making sure that people are not coming in with particular bad things. So the biggest thing, number one, that we look for is weapons. You can't bring weapons into venues. I mean, guns, knives, pistols, whatever. Uh, batteries, things to throw at people. You just can't bring that stuff in. And there have been many times where people around me have caught things. And there have been, there has been a time where I caught someone trying to bring a battery pack in on top of a pocket knife. So I had to confiscate those things. And it felt pretty good. But at the same time, it also felt crazy because this was when I first started. And that was a unique experience for me because it shows how people are willing to do anything in this world to wreak havoc. And you have to be prepared for it. Now, granted, sometimes you have to know that it might be someone trying to fool you but at the same time, you don't know that. So I'm just saying with this, the biggest thing is number one, we have to check for weapons. Number two, it's usually no outside food or drink when you go to these venues. Like you just can't bring in outside food or drink because you might have something in the drink that is explosive, it might be a bomb placed in the drink. Just like, think how you're at an airport. If you're traveling, you can't bring any outside food or drink once you go to that section right before you enter onto the plane. You can't bring outside food or drink, no matter what it is, because you never know what someone could have placed in those items. It could be a bomb. It could be 
alcohol for all we know. We could be literally anything other than just the food. So I think that it's really important to check for these things and people not only will do what they can to bring it with them to these venues and to these events, but they will hide it in certain places that you don't want to reach for. <laughs> uh, they've done it in their, yeah, they've done it in their pockets. They put it in their back pocket. They put it in their socks. They put it in their shoes. They put it in their places that I don't even want to mention. So it's just something that you need to know how extensive being a security officer can be because people may overlook security as it's just, oh, they're just people that stand around and do nothing. Oh, we do something because you don't understand the significance of how many things go into detail when you're asked to help and be the second aid to the police. We are the second aid to the police. That's just who we are. And like I said, if there was a step down from being a police officer, I think security is it. So some are armed, some are, some are unarmed. But like I said, this job is very extensive. And if I'm being honest, they don't pay us enough. So I wish that the pay rate was higher. I wish that many things changed. But like I said, I think it will change in the future because people will start to realize that you're putting your life at risk doing this job. You really are. And you have to fight some people. You gotta deal with people barking right up in your face. You have to deal with people touching you and you don't want to be touched. I mean, this is just something that you got to deal with. But like I said, it's just one of those jobs. And finally, the last thing I'll say is dealing with security or dealing with being in security. You have to know you're setting a certain standard. You can't go around breaking your code. And what I mean by that is you can't go around acting like a civilian at these events. Because when you act like a civilian, you're basically showing that you're not doing your job correctly. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're at a game and you're being a fan Yes, you can cheer, you can you can say, oh, that, that was a nice play or something. You could look at what's going on. At the same time, if you're not doing your job, then it takes away from all that's going on. So if you're not doing your job and making sure that people are safe, making sure that people feel welcome, making sure that people are just having a good time, then it's not worth it to be in this field. So that's just kind of the logistics of being a day in the life security officer. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment below. But like I said, this job really is a job and people will one day realize it if they haven't already. So I appreciate those who watched to the end. Make sure you check out my content. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at KingMaxMillion. And like I said, MillionMade.com is my personal business. So if you'd like to shop from there, I do offer shipping. It would be, it would mean a lot if you would support. It's your main man, Max Million. Hope to see you again in the near future.